Hey everybody. So I <clears throat> this video I made this video because I ever since I was a kid I do like a look good treasure hunt. And I found a couple little treasures here. Um I was riding my bike up in a nice mountain town here in Colorado some time ago and came across an open house for this big palatial house and so the, it was a slow day for the real estate agent lady so I asked her uh, could I take a look she said sure so she showed me a couple areas of the home and then we got to the garage and I was like you know there was a big pile of junk there and I was like I kind of jokingly said does this come with the house and she said, um, she, she said, uh, no, but you can take his, uh, uh, aim with you if you want. She was kind of joking, but she's a little frustrated because she said they, a dumpster was supposed to have been delivered so they could throw it away. But, so I was like, wow, I found a couple items, uh, could I take them? She said, sure, that's the less we have to throw out. Um, and by the way, the home apparently belongs to a Hollywood star, which, you know, she can't say who. Uh, I could guess. But one of the two items I found was this. It's called Mark 6, and it's an E-meter. Um, made, well, it was used by Scientology. And... I'm not here just to rag on them. I'm, I'm all very curious because it's a very secretive organization. So I'm very curious about what I found here and I'll find, more, find out more about this organization because, you know, it's hard to find stuff on it. And then the other is this. Now, it's still wrapped in saran wrap and judging by this container, I've seen these in the library. Uh, there's probably cassette tapes in here, um, so this goes back a while, um, but again, I'll, uh, it's still wrapped in saran wrap, has never been opened, so we're going to have the unveiling in this video, and assuming they are cassette tapes, I have my trusty old radio here with the cassette tape player, but let's uh, first open this up open this lid up and keep in mind that uh, this thing was used by uh, Scientology at one point you know just picture this in a room with you know anyways it says it's the Hubbard professional mark 6 and you can see there's some dials here you can adjust stuff and these you know on and off whatever now, I don't have all the attachments, and I looked online, and I saw <laughs> these originally came in suitcases with several attachments. Uh, there's a little hole there for one attachment, and there's another here for another attachment. Um, I believe, from what I saw online, um, one of these attachments is for an electrical source to pow power into... Uh, and I believe this would be that. It would plug into there and then the other end would put, plug into an outlet. And then this has uh, the thing you would plug into here and it's attached to these two uh, canister things that the subject would hold while they're doing the tests. I will go more into depth than that. Um, let's just read what's on the label here. It's, I'm going to just kind of show you a brief, um, it says it's the Hubbard, the Hubbard Electrometer Manufacturing Division. This product is covered by one or more United States and foreign patents or pending applications. It says E-meter, OK to audit. Serial number, uh, well, we'll leave the serial number out uh, because... You know, in case I disappear, I guess. Uh, let's see. And then it has a date. It says date okay to audit, March 8, 1993. And then it says date of next required check, March 8, 1994. All right, so let me 
I did a little research. <laughs> so I wrote this down, I'll just read it. If you're curious about the Scientology stuff, and keep in mind, this may be a little boring, but keep in mind after reading all this stuff, I'm going to unveil the cassettes and put, put them in here and we'll start playing them and see what we hear. <laughs> so the E-meter uh, was used by, well, Scientology has what they called auditors, also called counselors, but they call them auditors. Um, so the, the auditors in Scientology use the E-meters and it was adopted for use in what they call Dianetics. Um, now, Dianetics is a set of ideas and practices regarding the metaphysical relationship between the mind and body created by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard is the founder of Scientology. Uh, I believe he founded it in 1952. Now, the subject being tested by the e-meter. The subject is called the pre-clear. That's pre-clear. That's what they call the subject. Now the church says that a human is an immortal spiritual being called a thetan. And the thetan is resident in a physical body. The Thetan has had innumerable past lives and, is a, and it is observed in advanced Scientology text that lives preceding the Thetan's arrival on Earth were lived in extraterrestrial cult cultures. So again, before the pre... So again, the subject being tested is, to be, is believed by Scientology to have lived previous lives as an extraterrestrial. And um, this spiritual being is called a Thetan, and it's currently, you know, a pre-clear, because it hasn't reached the stage of clear. Now, the clear stage is one of the major states practitioner, wait a minute, <laughs> okay, I just wrote this down. The clear stage is one of the major states uh, that practitioners strive to reach on their way up the bridge to total freedom. The state of clear is reached when a person becomes free of the influence of engrams, and engrams are unwanted emotions or painful traumas not readily available to, this, to the conscious mind. The auditor gives the pre-clear. Okay, again, remember the pre-clear is the name of the subject being tested. The auditor gives the pre-clear a series of commands or questions while the pre-clear holds a pair of cylindrical electrodes connected to the meter. And I saw a picture online. There are these little cans connected by wires and you hold one in each hand. Their metal cans, and and the auditor notes both the verbal response and the activity of the meter. Auditor training includes familiarization with a number of characteristics needed. Needed. Oh, okay. Let me start that over. Auditor training includes familiarization with a number of characteristics. Neat characteristic needle movements. So, you know, they're trained, you know, to know what all these different points mean when the needle moves to those different points. Um, now, and each with a specific, each point on that needle dial has a specific significance. This is supposed to help the Auditor locate engrams and areas of change when auditing a preclear. No, it's hard to keep up with this because uh, all these different names. 
Now, the, some critics of Dianetics and Scientology assert that the Scientology, Scientology concepts associated with the E-meter and its use are regarded by the scientific and mental communities as pseudoscience and that the E-meter has never been subjected to clinical trials as a therapeutic tool. Scientologists claim that in the hands of a trained operator, the meter can indicate whether a person has been relieved from the spiritual impediment of past experiences. According to L. Ron Hubbard, the E-meter is used by the operator for three vital functions. Number one, to determine what process to run and and what to run it on. Number two, to observe how well the process is running. And number three, to know when the process should be stopped. The, the church claims that the e-meter can be used to assess the emotion charge of single words, whole sentences, and questions, as well as indicating the general state of the subject when the operator is not speaking. Um, now, let's get into the fun stuff. Um, so I looked at, they have many legal cases from the past. I just picked out a handful. So I'll describe a few of these real quick. In 1958, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, seized and destroyed 21,000 dianazine tablets from Hubbard's distribution center, charging that they were falsely labeled as a treatment for radiation sickness. Again, so L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, had a distribution center, and the FDA uh, seized and destroyed 21,000 of these dianazine tablets where they were labeled as a treatment for radiation sickness. Now, another case on January 4th, 1963, on behalf of the FDA, over 100 U.S. Marshals with drawn guns raided the founding Church of Scientology in Washington, D.C., and more than three tons of property was confiscated. That included 5,000 books, 2,100 booklets, several hundred E-meters, several hundred of these, although this, I believe, was built in the early 90s, judging by the date, but they had older models of E-meters. And um, the FDA accused the church, in this case, of making false medical claims that the E-meters could treat physical and mental illnesses. In 1979, in another case, in Sweden, a court forbade calling the e-meter an invaluable aid to measuring man's mental state and changes in it in, a, in an advertisement. So again, in 1979 in Sweden, they took basically uh, banned Scientology from a certain advertisement, making false claims. Now, 10 years ago, in October 2009, a three-judge panel at the Correctional Court in Paris, France, convicted the church and six of its members of organized fraud. This decision followed a three-week trial where two plaintiffs alleged they were defrauded by the organization. One plaintiff claimed that after being audited by the device, she was encouraged to pay tens of thousands of euros for vitamins, books, and courses to improve her condition. So again, she was tested by one of these things, and ju by the, judging by the results, the auditors uh, encouraged her to spend tens of thousands of euros to buy vitamins, books, and courses to improve her condition. That's quite the business model. Have this thing uh, diagnose her with something and then uh, have her buy tens of thousands of euros worth of stuff to cure her. Now, 
up. We'll look at this a little bit more later, but uh, let's have the big unveiling of what's in here. All right. So again, this is plastic wrapped in plastic. It's never been opened. I don't know if there's a date on here. Uh, but it looks like it has a copyright dates. The Ron Elron Library, Elron Hubbard Library, and it says copyright 1988, 99, 94, and 2001. Huh. So 2001. Maybe these aren't cassette tapes, but uh, let's see what we got here. So again, this has never been opened. Oh, they are cassette tapes. Ooh, and there's a, wow, there's a book in here too. This should be interesting. Huh. Look at this, just another surprise. Uh, oh, and here's a number. Wow. This is an so here's where they can sell more stuff to you. And there's a number if you guys want to call it. <laughs> but the prices are pretty outrageous. And this again is who knows how old, but it's it's at least not older than 2001. But it's, it says free shipping, fast delivery. We send your order within 24 hours of receipt. Call direct now at 1-800-535-0656. Full price, $500. Like, uh, gosh, I mean, I hope you get more than this for 500 bucks, but more on that later. So I'm going to pull out one of these cassettes. Again, this is the first time of, let's see, and I hope my cassette tip player works. Huh. Let's see. L. Ron Hubbard building a better world lectures. Let's see what we got here. We don't even know how to open this. Hmm. I'm not even sure how to put this in. Oh, maybe it's upside down. I've never used this before. Alrighty, so then. Let's see, I can't read this. Whoops. Let's see. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Well, let's see. That's disappointing. Hmm. Bear with me here. Uh, maybe this just doesn't work. I don't know. I've never used the cassette player. Nice on. Uh, hmm. Oh, here we go. It's it's rolling. Yet. This is a lecture by L. Ron Hubbard given on the 18th of July, 1957. Oh. The title of this lecture is What Scientology is Addressed to. This tape is 62 minutes long. Reproduced by Golden Era Productions. Thank you. Thank you very much. You uh, look unusually. Uh... <laughs> well, let's just say unusual. That. This is the fourth lecture, the 18th ACC, July 18, isn't it? 1957. 
I uh, beg your pardon. Uh, year seven A.D. after Dianetics. <laughs> Did you hear that? Year seven after Dianetics. What? Well, these lectures should follow a very orderly course. Each one should take up in turn exactly what should be taken up at that moment. And uh, the outline, uh, which was going to be used for these lectures, is the student was the student manual, but is it? <laughs> because I looked over the student manual very carefully on its table of contents and discovered something fantastic. The student manual spoke for itself. All it is is all of the exact data of Scientology, all of the exact data. Uh, the old Dianetic axioms, the pre-logics, the factors, uh, uh, what auditing is, uh, how it is done, uh, all the TRs, uh, how you sign up a preclear, uh, you know, just... <laughs> and I was so overwhelmed. That's different than being overwhelmed, you know. That's really it, being overwhelmed that uh, I hardly could make any lectures at all, so I'll just have to go along here on my own steam somehow and muck it out one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a vote of confidence. <laughs> well, the lecture this evening is, uh, could be clumsily stated, of uh, what Scientology is addressed to or what it is shot at, or what it is done to. <laughs> you know, uh, in this day and age, a subject which has no application uh, is only in favor in the universities. And uh, they teach them there, but uh, the people who have to get along in the world and who have to get things done can't allow themselves this luxury. So Scientology is shot at something. And uh, let's just take a very fast look at what it is addressed to. It is addressed basically, fundamentally, and accurately to you. And on that via is addressed to the physical universe, the forms of the physical universe, including live forms, and to all other beings in the physical universe, regardless of what they may be, and is also addressed to the non-existence of many beings who aren't. You, you got that. It is also addressed to beings that aren't. Now, there are a lot of imaginary and legendary beings and beasts, just like there were in the Dark Ages, the way the ancient mariners kept people from coming over and trading with the American coast. It was quite interesting. Reread it uh, that every... Okay, so I'm going to just stop this there. I'm just doing a little experiment. I'm going to press fast forward. I'm just going to press fast forward and see what I find. Just right at any stop at any point. Now, uh, we have here a functional subject. And in view of the fact that it is a functional subject, it must perforce carry with it a great many routes or tracks or ways to go. And if you have routes through the primaval forest or mm. the raging seas peopled by monsters 18 times as big as Texas. Let me try just flipping the cassette around and seeing what we find. Just press or also own a mine. And if that is true, then they have a right to know what you know about it. Hmm. And then if you tell them that, they meet somebody else who owns a mine, and then if this other person owns a mine, then they have the right to know what this second person knew about 
Mm. Well, at any rate, that's that for now. Uh, I think I'm going to have to make a second video on this. <laughs> Again, this is pretty interesting. I mean, just weird to know that at one point this was attached to s electrodes that were someone was holding in their hand, and then a Scientology person was using, you know, turning these dials and this, and then telling him or her based on what this is, what their situation is, and then you need to buy ten thousand dollars worth of vitamins and you know books to cure yourself. It's quite a quite the business model. Maybe I'll set this up on the 16th Street Mall. Anyways, uh, it's kind of a fun treasure hunt, and that's it for now. Uh, have, I'm going to have to examine these tapes because it's very interesting. Again, these, this was just opened, and I'm glad my cassette player works. I've never used a cassette player in this radio, so anyways, that's it for now.